So now we're going to move on to the medial compartment of the leg. So the medial compartment consists of six different muscles. So we'll take a look at those now. So I'll just get rid of the sartorius and we can look at the medial compartment muscles. So these muscles originate on in this area of the pelvis. So sort of the body of the pubis, the ischio pubic ramus, this sort of area is where the uh, muscles of the medial compartment originate. And these muscles are mainly innervated by the obturator nerve. So there's two muscles that are innervated by separate nerves. You've got the pectineus muscle, which is this muscle here, and that's innervated by the femoral nerve. And you've got the hamstring part of the adductor longus muscle, which is innervated by the sciatic nerve. So by the tibial branch of the sciatic nerve. But apart from that, they're all innervated by the obturator nerve. So these muscles, these group of muscles mainly adduct the femur at the hip joint. So the first muscle I'll talk about is this muscle, which is most medial, and it runs vertically down the medial aspect of the thigh. So this muscle is called the gracilis muscle. So you can see its course down the inside of the leg from the body of the pubis inserting onto the medial surface of the proximal tibia. So it inserts just behind the insertion point of the sartorius. So this muscle adducts the thigh and it flexes the knee. So next we've got the pectineus muscle. So you can see this muscle here. It's a sort of rectangular in shape and it's innervated by the femoral nerve rather than the obturator nerve. So I've just isolated it here, isolated it here and you can see um, it originating here on the pectineal line and inserting onto the femur. So what this muscle does, it adducts and flexes the thigh at the hip joint. So that's the pectineus muscle. And then we've got a group of muscles called the adductor muscle. So you've got the adductor longus, the adductor brevis, and the adductor magnus. This is the most um, superficial of the adductor muscles, um, and this is called the adductor longus. So this muscle adducts and medially rotates the thigh. And the medial, the medial border of this muscle forms the medial border of the femoral triangle. So I've just brought in, brought back the sartorius muscle. So the femoral, just to explain the femoral triangle. So the femoral triangle is this area in the upper thigh. Um, so the superior border is the inguinal, inguinal ligament, which runs from the anterior superior iliac spine down to the pubic tubercle. So that's the superior border. Then you've got the lateral border formed by the medial border of the sartorius muscle. So this margin here. And then, like I just mentioned, you've got the medial border of the adductor longus muscle, which forms the medial border of the femoral triangle. So the femoral triangle is this region here. So the adductor longus and the pectineus muscle adjacent to it form the medial, um, medial part of the floor of the femoral triangle. And then you've got the lateral part formed by the terminal ends of the iliopsoas muscle. So that's just a quick bit about the femoral triangle. So we'll just take a look at the adductor longus muscle. So you can see its origin on the femur in the um, uh, middle third of the femur. So I'm just going to dissect away some of these muscles. Um, so you've got the pectineus here, you've got the adductor longus which I've just shown you. And I'm just going to remove that muscle so we can see what's beneath. So you've got this smaller muscle which inserts on the femur a little higher up in the upper third of the femur. So this is called the adductor brevis. So remember brevis means short in Latin, so it's a shorter muscle. The adductor longus inserts further down here. So this muscle, the adductor brevis muscle, lies behind the pectineus and the adductor longus muscle. And this muscle adducts the thigh. So most deep we've got this huge muscle underneath, so I'll just get rid of the adductor brevis and we can see this big muscle here and this is called the adductor magnus muscle so magnus means big or great in Latin, so it's the biggest um, 
adductor muscle and it's got two parts. It's got a hamstring part which is this part here which sort of runs up vertically and you've got the adductor part which is this part here. So I've just isolated it to give you a good view. So you've got the hamstring part which sort of runs vertically up and you've got the adductor part which is this part here. So the hamstring part of the adductor magnus is innervated by the tibial branch of the femoral nerve rather than the ob obturator nerve. So the this part, the adductor part, is actually innervated by the obturator nerve. And they've got two different or origins. So the hamstring part essentially descends vertically and it originates on the ischial tuberosity, whereas the um, adductor part originates on the ischiopubic ramus. So this muscle adducts and medially rotates the thigh. So finally we've got the obturator externus muscle. So you can see this muscle here. So it sits on the lateral surface of the obturator membrane and it winds round behind the hip joint to insert into an oval depression in the trochanteric fossa. So just isolate it again here. You can see it sitting on the obturator membrane over the obturator foramen and it winds round behind the hip joint and it inserts into this little depression here, the trochanteric fossa. So this muscle externally rotates the thigh. So if you remember the obturator internus muscle, it sits on the medial surface of the obturator membrane. So you can see that there and it's a 90 degree bend round. So you can see the obturator externus and internus. So again, the obturator externus is innervated by the obturator nerve. So just bringing back the muscles of the medial compartment, you've got two muscles which aren't innervated by the obturator nerve in the medial compartment. You've got the pectineus muscle, which is this rectangular muscle here, innervated by the femoral nerve, and you've got the hamstring part of the adductor longus muscle, which is innervated by the uh, tibial branch of the sciatic nerve. But apart from that, the rest are innervated by the obturator nerve. Okay, so the final compartment of the thigh is the posterior compartment. So the posterior compartment is very simple because you've only got three muscles there. So I'll just remove the gluteus maximus to get a good look at this compartment. So the muscles in this compartment are innervated by branches of the sciatic nerve. And these muscles, um, apart from the short head of the biceps femoris muscle, these originate all originate on the ischial tuberosity and they run down to insert on the tibia and they extend the hip joint and flex at the knee joint. So you've got three muscles. You've got this muscle here which sits laterally. This is the biceps femoris muscle and it has two heads. You've got a long head which originates on the ischial tuberosity and you've got a short head which originates on the femur and it inserts onto the head of the fibula. And then medially you've got the semimembranosus muscle and the semitendinosus muscle. So a way of remembering it is semimembranosus has an M in it, so M medial, and semimembranosus and semitendinosus both have a semi in it, so that they both go together, so they're both medial because semimembranosus is medial, so semitendinosus is medial. And then semitendinosus has a T in it, so semitendinosus sits on top. So biceps femoris laterally, and then you've got semimembranosus and semitendinosus medially, with semitendinosus sitting on the top. So I've just isolated these muscles, and you can see the origin of these muscles on the ischial tuberosity. And then you can see the short head of the biceps femoris muscle originating on the femur. So the long head and the short head converge into this common tendon and then insert onto the head of the fibula. So the biceps femoris muscle extends at the hip joint and flexes at the knee joint. So the semitendinosus is the one that sits on the top 
and it's medial to the biceps femoris muscle and it runs down and inserts on the medial surface of the proximal tibia. So it inserts just behind the gracilis muscle. So if I just bring the other muscles back in, you can see the gr gracilis here running down and it inserts just behind the sartorius muscle but just in front of the point where the semitendinosus muscle inserts. So the semitendinosus muscle, again it flexes the knee and it um, extends at the hip. So the semimembranosus muscle has the same action, extending at the hip and flexing at the knee joint. Um, so it works works together with the semitendinosus muscle. Um, but just let's just have a look at the insertion point. So it actually inserts um, behind on the medial condyle of the femur, and it also inserts posteriorly on the medial condyle of the tibia. And it also some of the fibres from the tendon blend with the uh, fascia, which covers the knee joint. So. All these muscles of the posterior compartment, well the three muscles of the posterior compartment are innervated by the sciatic nerve. So the main function of these muscles is to extend at the hip, flex at the knee. So that's um, the muscles of the gluteal region and of the thigh. Uh, it's probably quite long, but if you want to learn a bit more in detail about uh, the various muscle actions and the um, points of origin and insertion, then uh, take a look at my individual tutorials where I cover it in a bit more detail. So sorry if this was a bit more rushed, but feel free to rewind, rewatch, uh, whatever, and take a look at my other tutorials.